In this two-part screencast, we're going to look at using Xerti Online Toolkits with Moodle. In part one, we'll look at linking to learning objects and embedding learning objects. In part two, we'll look at exporting and importing as normal ZIP or as SCORM and the pros and cons of each. And we'll also look at the authentication method. There's a Moodle patch available and embedding the Xerti Online Toolkits interface. In a previous tutorial, we um, began to create um, a learning object and this is where we ended with um, five text pages and a single media and graphics and sound page. So although this learning object isn't finished, um, we're going to use this to explore the, um, the options for embedding this or using this learning object via a Moodle course. The first thing to say is that when we click play and effectively preview our learning object, we always see the most up-to-date changes because what preview is doing or play is doing is actually committing those changes to an XML file called preview.xml. However, if we'd already made this um, learning object public, um, and shared it somewhere either via a link or by embedding it which is which are things we're going to look at shortly um, we wouldn't necessarily see the most up-to-date changes until we click the publish button top right you can see as we hover over that it says save file so it's important to be aware of that difference that publish will commit the changes to uh, any public version of this file whereas play will only commit the changes to our preview version while we're editing now this has an advantage in as far as we can make changes and continue to make changes and it's only when we um, click the save or publish button um, that those changes will be uh, committed to the view um, that other users might see so it's important to stress that and also um, if we were to export this learning object with without clicking publish it will only contain the changes in the export version um, since the last time we published it won't uh, contain any changes that we've made recently the other thing we need to do if we're going to simply link to the object is to select the learning object and select properties and by default all learning objects are private so the first thing we need to do here is select the access tab and sure enough we can see that this one is still private so we tick the public box and select save so that's now ensured that if we um, link to this anywhere it will be available rather than only available via our logged in workspace you can see we've um, got some other options here but that will be a topic for a future tutorial so if we click back to project now we can see that we've got a link that we can select either from here and copy and paste using keyboard shortcuts or right click and select copy or we could actually view the link to make sure the learning object is okay and then copy it from the address bar so we've already copied this to the clipboard so we can close the properties window and to save a bit of time, we've already logged into a Moodle course. So we're going to turn editing on. And here in this first topic area, we're going to select link to a file or website. And we're going to type example of a linked learning object because we already have the link copied to the clipboard we can just press Control v or right click and select paste to to link to the file now it's important to just check what options we've got here all of them will work but sometimes there's um, some advantages so for instance we actually are going to select the option to keep the navigation so we'll select um, 
yes without frame. We'll leave the other um, elements as the default and click save and return to course. So if we now turn editing off just so that we are looking at this as a student would, we can come into the course, click the link here and what we should see is our Xerti learning object appearing and we still have the breadcrumb trail at the top to get back to the home page or get back to the, the home page of the site. Because we previously set the learning object to fill window by default, it's filling the screen nicely rather than being constrained to a, an 800 by 600 window. Okay, so we'll just navigate back to our course page and switch back to our Xerti installation and select properties on the learning object again. This time instead of copying the link we're going to select the embed code or the iframe code here and again either right click or use keyboard shortcuts to copy that embed code. Switch back to our Moodle course, turn editing on and so this time we're going to compose a web page. And this is going to be an example of an embedded learning object. Um, so we scroll down here to the web page area and the important thing to do is to switch to HTML mode. So as we hover over the, the little button here it says toggle HTML source. Um, and we also get confirmation that we're in the text mode um, via the, the status bar here. So we can just press Control V or right click and select paste to embed our learning object. We don't need to switch back to the, the normal view and we'll click save and return to course. Okay, once again just turn editing off and in our second topic area now we have the link to an example of an embedded learning object and if we click this we can see that um, it's appearing much the same as the linked learning object but embedded in a web page within the Moodle course so we still have our breadcrumb trail so to all intents and purposes the the two are providing the same kind of um, view in as far as our learning object still resides in our toolkits installation but it's appearing as though it's inside the Moodle course. Now of course one of the advantages of uh, the ability to embed is that we could have chosen to uh, insert a label and embed it in the topic area. So we'll do that now. We'll repeat the process, switch to HTML view, paste our code which is still in the clipboard and save and return to the course. Now what we can see now if we turn editing off again is we have our learning object actually embedded in the topic area and appearing in the topic area. Um, now I'd recommend a word of caution here in as far as you wouldn't want to have lots of learning objects um, load in within the course page and have a big long scrolling course page um, but maybe one or two embedded in a label like this so this is quite a nice feature um, the other thing to mention about this is that we have a course here that's been structured so that we aren't seeing any of the blocks or um, additional um, content to the left or right of the topic area um, what you might need to do if we turn editing back on is to edit your embedded learning object and if we switch back to the HTML view here you might need to change the size of the iframe here and as long as you've got the learning object set to full screen or fill window it should resize reasonably well to a smaller area below 800 by 600 but let's just try that so we'll make this 600 by 400 
and click save and return to course we turn editing off now we now have a, a much smaller um, version of the learning object embedded here um, which technically obviously works but practically and and certainly in terms of accessibility um, benefits could potentially be quite difficult to read and difficult for for at least some learners to to navigate so i'd always recommend having a a link alongside the embedded learning object so that um, a learner could choose to view it full screen and open it in a new browser window rather than just being forced to view the the smaller embedded version but you certainly can do this and you can obviously link from one learning object to another so at the moment we've looked at linking learning objects and embedding learning objects and and the primary um, aspect of this is that any changes we make to that learning object in the toolkits installation will be automatically updated as long as we click publish um, will be automatically updated in any of the Moodle courses that we've provided a link or embedded a copy of that learning object so this provides a, a very quick way of updating a learning object in one place um, but cascading those changes to any courses um, that you've you've made that learning object available in this two-part screencast we looked at using Xerti online toolkits for Moodle and in part one we looked at linking to learning objects and the fact that you can update one copy and have that automatically update wherever you've linked to it from so in as many courses as you like and also embedding learning objects and the fact that you can embed in either a topic label have it appear in the home page of the course or in a web page and therefore one link away from the home page do review part two of this tutorial which carries on from part one. I'm Ron Mitchell, this has been Quick and Dirty Zerty.